Hi everyone and welcome back to The Journey. As you can see, today we're going to be talking about women's health as far as vul vulvaginal candidas, okay? Also known as candida albicans, okay? Which is also your yeast infection. Alright, so you can have young fungal, sorry, fungal or a yeast infection caused by strains of candida, which I said before, you have your candida albicans, which is the most common case of the yeast infection. And then you also have candida galbarata, which is pretty much um, can also be indicated or implemented as well. So in many healthy women, we kind of harbor candida albicans, but we are asymptomatic, okay? So these are your um, bacteria that you find in your vaginal area, right? But you have your good bacteria that helps to fight it off or at least keep it at a stable level, okay? Which you don't really see any signs or symptoms. But with the use of um, antibiotics that can decrease your normal flora, Right, which causes an overgrowth to of the um, candida albicans that will be there, and then from there, that's how you can have your yeast infection. Which at least is one example of how you can have your yeast infection. Okay, where you have your normal flora level is down due to antibiotic therapy. All right. Also, um, it can occur at any time, but it mostly occurs during pregnancy, right, or uh, systemic conditions such as your diabetes. Right, HIV, right, because your immune system is low, all right, or with medication like corticosteroids or oral contraception, okay? Then you have your clinical manifestations, which is your signs and symptoms, which is your nursing assessment. So with your nursing assessment, thing that you want to watch out for, right, is your vaginal discharge can be very um, itchy, okay? So a lot of women will complain about it itching down here, okay? So also, they may have irritation. Alright, so it can be redness or swelling or things like that because you've been irritating it, whether because of the itching, of, of, of the constant itching of it, or the fact that it's just irritated just because it's a yeast infection, right? Also, the discharge, the vaginal discharge can be watery or thick, right? But the main thing that I want you guys to remember is that it is a white cottage cheese-like appearance, okay? And yes, there's other conditions that have vaginal discharge, but with this one, this is what makes it stand out, that white cottage cheese like consistency okay or that texture or that appearance okay so yes cottage cheese all right so your symptoms are going to be more severe just before menstruation and they're going to be less responsive during treatment during um, pregnancy okay and one main reason why for pregnancy is because you have to pay attention to the different medication um, or the different antibiotics that the, that the mother is able to take that would not harm the fetus so there's going to be medication that the mother may not be able to take and that's why it's going to be less less responsive because you will have to worry about a fetus who you know can have adverse effects because of these medications so they may not be able to take the medication that it will be more effective so you will have a less um, a less response of these medications during pregnancy okay that can be one reason so now we have the diagnostic testing of the yeast infection right which is your candida so what you're going to do, you're going to have a microscopic identification of the spores and the height, all right, on a glass slide, all right, that's going to be prepared from a discharge specimen that's going to be mixing with the potassium hydroxide, okay? So pretty much what you're going to do is just going to get some of that vaginal discharge and you'll put it on the, on the glass with a little smear, put it under the microscope, and they're going to drop some potassium hydroxide on there, and then from there, that's how you're going to see um, exactly what's going on, okay? The pH level is going to be 4.5 or less, all right? So here are your medical management. So your goal ultimately is to eliminate the symptoms, okay? Then you're gonna have your treatments. Your treatment is going to be the antifungal agents, okay? Such as, um, main one that I put here is your monostat, okay? And I know you've probably seen this on TV a lot, a lot of commercials, and monostat is almost like a one-day um, type of um, treatment and you're pretty much good to go, right? They also have your niastatin, okay? And in parentheses here, these are your trade names. Everything else on the other side is your generic name. Again, I always try to remember the generic name just because that's what you're going to be tested on for NCLEX and more so on your, on your nursing exam, okay? Also, so these are all your lists of the different medications that they can use. The main one that they like to use a lot is your monostat, all right? Um, now you're going to 
Um, and start into the vagina with an applicator at bedtime. You can have either one night, three night, or seven night um, course treatment. Okay, and it's pretty much a vaginal suppository or so. And you'll pretty much put it up there and you'll do this however often you need to do it for your treatment session. Okay, most women tend to go for the one night just because it's convenient and it, there's more compliant, right? You don't have to remember, oh, I forgot to put it on the other night or I forgot to put it on, you know, on day seven or so if you're on the seven day. Um, course seven night course okay so most of the time most women just want to be able to know that I'm treated in one day all right also you have oral medication you have the diflucan okay and that's just pretty much another antifungal medication and there's a one pill dose okay so most people like I said before tend to just deal with the one that's just a one-time thing okay just because you just take it one time and they're good to go all right so these are your medical management it's pretty much your antifungal medication. Why? Because yeast infection is a fungal infection. All right, so last but not least, we're going to just continue on with the medical management. All right, so you should have relief within three days. All right, you want to be careful with the vaginal creams without prescription because you want to make sure that you're taking it mainly because you have a yeast infection. Some people may misdiagnose themselves and think that they have a yeast infection and take this medication and cause more harm than good. So you want to make sure that... Um, if you are taking this medication, it's because you know for sure, for sure that you have a yeast infection, all right? Also, if you're uncertain about the causes of the symptoms, the symptoms or you have more relief after, you know, using these vaginal creams and things like that, you definitely want to make sure that you see a healthcare provider because maybe it could be something worse or maybe it may not be the fact that you have a yeast infection at all, okay? So, um, you also want to just check back with the doctor and let them know Say, hey, I've been using this cream, I've been following the instructions on, you know, how to apply it and how, many, how often I should apply it, but I'm still getting no relief from it, all right? Also, um, the yeast infection can become reoccurring and complicated, okay? So like I said, it can become um, more complicated than what you think, all right? So if you have more, um, more, more uh, yeast infections, at least more than four, that's, that's, that shouldn't be, right? Because that is just too common for the year that you're having for, okay? It should not be reoccurring, 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 at least not that often, okay? So you want to make sure that you're checking the reason why, okay? So you can actually have severe symptoms due to the fact that you have pre-existing condition, like if you have diabetes or any other immunosuppressive illness like HIV um, or any, any of those things, okay, lupus, any of those um, that's going to cause a decrease in your immune system to fight off these infections and things like that, you want to make sure that um, you're, you're aware of what's going on and provide the correct, uh, the correct treatment so that way you're able to have some type of relief. Also, um, the cell, you have cell me, um, mediated immunity and then you also have that what you want to do is a comprehensive gynecologic assessment. So go see your GYN, right, and get a complete assessment of why exactly am I having reoccurring um, yeast infection, right? They may be able to find the reason why and may be able to provide a solution. So you want to make sure that you go and you see your OBGYN, your GYN, right, and know exactly what's going on so that way you can kind of prevent these yeast infections from happening, you know, so often and so frequently, all right? So... Again, that is it with all the medical management for a person who is experiencing candida albicans, right, or vaginal candidas. All right, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any comments, please uh, feel free to make, leave a comment in the comment section below. Also, for more information that I didn't always state in the video, you can always check out the description box for more added information. And again, thank you for watching and coming on this journey.